Welcome to my presentation on cue learning uh, and reinforcement learning uh, based off of CAP 6229 reinforcement learning in Professor Nee's class at Florida Atlantic University in the College of Engineering and Computer Science. Hello, my name is Sean and this is my presentation on cue learning based off our second project uh, that we did in class for graduate studies. Now, for those of you who don't know, and I might be going out of limb here and showing my age a little bit, uh, but this bright little character up in the left-hand corner, his name is Cubert. Now, Cubert uh, was and still is an arcade game uh, that was released around 1982. And like in reinforcement learning, Cubert is an agent whose job it is to navigate the digital environment, uh, avoiding obstacles and errors, and taking actions and moving through different states until he reaches the end goal. Um, essentially, though, Cubert here uh, is run by human intelligence. Uh, and unlike Cubert, Q learning, um, where we navigate through obstacles using policies and Q tables and many other things that we're going to explore um, in this presentation that I have for you. So, let's get started. Q learning, on the other hand, like I said, is considered deterministic. Uh, and that reinforcement learning model is that it is outputted, uh, is determined solely by the input and the initial conditions, thereby always returning the same results. It also has better capabilities for handling real-world scenarios uh, than other reinforcement learning algorithms um, that we'll talk about here in just a minute. Uh, so if we look at methods like value iteration, for instance, uh, which is an iterative algorithm that uses the Bellman equation to compute the optimal Markov decision process and its value, uh, we see that it's got a couple problems. Um, and one of the problems is that a policy may converge sooner than the values actually converge. Uh, and that can be a big problem. Also, the policy extraction is a second step um, as opposed to a primary step. And it assumes perfect knowledge of the transitions and reward functions. So it means it's got to have perfect knowledge of everything that's going on in the environment at all times, which in a real world scenario, we don't know um, where every, you know, uh, you know, blockade is or where the boundaries are or where we should be going um, with our agents. Um, so, in retrospect, when we look at reinforcement learning, uh, we also notice that there are two main types of reinforcement learning algorithm models. Um, a model-free algorithm is an algorithm that estimates the optimal policy without using or estimating the dynamics, uh, the transition and reward functions of the environment. Whereas a model-based algorithm uh, like Q-learning is an algorithm that uses the transition function and the reward function in order to estimate that optimal policy. Also, just because there is a model, and I'm just putting this out there, of an environment implemented does not mean that the reinforcement learning agent is model-based. To qualify as a model-based reinforcement learning algorithm, the learning algorithms have to explicitly reference the model, and that is something that we should all keep in mind moving forward, and is a good piece of information uh, that you should know that I got out of a reference paper. Um, Q learning essentially is model free. And we can see here that we take in the Q values for the state given a particular state, but we want to work backwards. We want to take the given state in action, um, run our calculation with the expected discount cumulative rewards, um, applying gamma, applying any of our learning and error rates to get the Q values for the state for the given particular state. Now, like I said, these values um, basically um, let me see where I'm at on my slide here. Uh, the Q learning model uh, learns the optimal MDP policy using the Q values, which estimate the value of taking an action at a given state. And these values are then inferred to the Q table for the policy to learn. The Q function uses the Bellman equation and takes two inputs, the state and action, as you can clearly see here. Now, if we follow the algorithmic logic here um, through an iterative process, uh, what we see is that we initialize this Q table, 
um, through the actions that we just explained on the last slide. Then we choose another action, we perform that action, and then we calculate that reward. And that's actually including the, the biases such as the learning and error rates uh, and anything that we want to use after that to um, you know have parameters involved to find the maximum convergence. Uh, and that's when we update this Q table to get these Q values and then we can see the Q values uh, and keep learning off of those values as opposed to learning off the iterative process. And we just do this over and over until we find the best convergence, following the flow for Q learning. Um, now, by definition, Q policy, um, the S of A, is expected value. Um, the cumulative discount reward of doing an action A in a state S uh, and then following that optimal policy. Q learning uses temporal difference to estimate the values of the Q policy. Um, to temporal difference in the agent uh, learning from that environment. I'm saying Q policy, but I mean Q star. Um, I misquoted that. Uh, the agent maintains the, the Q table, the table of Q S of A, where S is the set of states and A is a set of actions. Q S of A represents its current estimate within the value or within the Q table function or Q value function. And we're trying to maximize this uh, value function um, based on the old states and basically we're finding the best path as we go along updating this table with more precise probability calculations through this iterative model um, so that way we can learn the states that we're actually been to and that we're at so that way we can move forward and base calculations while we're running basically mapping everything out uh, essentially and in a standard Q learning approach for every possible state and action, there is a Q value. Uh, this Q value represents uh, basically the utility of an action in a particular state, and that is roughly the expected future reward uh, when taking that action in a specific state. Now, an agent in a grid world will continuously take actions, um, like I mentioned previously, until it reaches that terminal state, updating those Q values to the Q table as it goes, learning that environment. Um, that set of actions is taken from the, the starting state to the terminal state, uh, basically represents what we know as an episode. Now, Q values are updated through an episode um, as the following algorithm uh, that we see in front of us. Uh, and this is the one that I've, I've implemented, uh, where S is the current state, A is the current action, S um, prime is the next state, A of prime represents the action from the S prime state and where we have gamma which represents the discount factor for the Q values. Now in my algorithm that I implemented for project two, um, which if you want, I will leave the code below because this is going to be posted on YouTube uh, to the Google Colab for everybody to check out. But essentially uh, we're using a five by five grid world example uh, where the starting state is zero and the end state is four. Uh, our learning rate is 0.1 and the error rate gamma is at 0.9. And I know that's close to one, um, but I've, I did a lot of playing around with it. And honestly, uh, that was the, the, the fastest one that I can get to converge. And it kind of converged the same around eight. But um, once you drop down to like seven and six, it started, you know, taking longer to converge. Um, and it, it was really you've seen some weird things in it. Um, I actually put a Python library in here too to actually estimate the time of the loop convergence, which we'll show you the loops here in a minute. But I digress. Um, here we see that uh, you know our epsilon, our alpha value, and the step size is based on new evidence from the environment. And then we determine how aggressively we should update our estimate parameters. Now, the Q value is assigned to every possible state or action. And it can be thought of as the expected future reward of taking an action A where, in particular, the state S, uh, the Q value uh, basically representing that futuristic reward. Now, agents in this grid world continue taking these actions until they reach that terminal state, updating those Q values. And like I said, in order to you know find the best convergence, um, I had to play around uh, with the parameters in that sense. And these are the best parameters that I've found. Um, I could have used something else. They're really 
close, uh, but this one basically converged a lot quicker. That's why I used the library to uh, test the time of the loops. I put a little bit of code in between each iterative loop, and uh, I was able to test out how long everything was taking to converge, uh, which all this stuff takes a while, uh, depending on what you're using. But anyways, this right here is part of the code that I use, and you can see here, we're basically using three loops. Uh, we're using a while loop as the infinite loop, um, where the inner loop uh, implements the policy, the stochastic probability, updating the actions in the states and kicking them back around to the outer loop, which updates the final iterations of the Q values to the Q table, and then keeps converging uh, through another episode into the middle loop, which initializes the count and the random actions um, that are needed within that while loop to implement each episode. And I just thought I'd give you a quick look at the code um, that I used. Uh, and like I said before, I'll probably leave a link uh, to my Google Colab code, my Python notebook, uh, so you guys could check it out and play with it if you want. Um, now, here's the good stuff. Here's where it converged. And I mean, I put seven, but uh, that kind of could be eight. Uh, where we see that convergence there. It depends on where you're looking at it. I'm looking at that little um, point right about here, calling that seven, but I guess it could be eight if it was a little bit more over. But from the step to goal curve, we can see uh, with an epsilon of one uh, that the seventh episode, eight arguably, that the agent has learned the optimal policy and the step to goal curve converges. Uh, and in the first seven episodes, we can see that, you know, the agent is exploring and trying to find the optimal policy, which is something really cool. Now, I did put a B table in here. And, and what's interesting about this is we can see that the optimal policy that the agent learned involves moving over east four times and then moving north four times. And we can see all the different actions that the agent took uh, in our grid world. So um, with that, that is the end of my presentation. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or were confused about everything I said, um, I'm sorry if I, I feel like I was running through this really fast because I was reading off these notes. Not every day that I, I do a presentation. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And I had a great semester with all of you classmates who are watching this and reviewing it. And for all of you guys who are watching this on YouTube, um, you know, if you have any questions about reinforcement learning, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be glad to answer them for you. Thank you.